filters plays a big role in electronics world where signal filtering is needed since by using a high pass filter it's possible to convert this signal to this signal by removing its DC content it's also possible to convert a square wave signal to a sine wave signal by using a low pass filter in this video we are going to discuss the basics of filters and the steps of RC filter design we are going to play with signals today so get ready and let's start our video Before diving into filters, I want to let you know that in my next video I am planning to explain the working principle of voltage detector circuit, which you can even use as a touch sensor. So make sure that you subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so you can stay tuned. Now let's have a look at the working principle of high pass filters before jumping into its application. All what we need is to find the relationship between the input voltage and the output voltage, and this is possible by applying the voltage division formula. Of course we need to remember the capacitor reactance and the impedance formulas. And here you go, now we have the output voltage amplitude formula in terms of the input voltage. Now to see the beauty of this simple circuit, let's apply DC voltage at the input. And as we know, DC voltage has zero frequency. And by applying this to the output voltage amplitude formula, this term will go to infinity, which will lead the output voltage to go to zero. This means that this circuit blocks DC voltage. Now to show you a practical example, I've used a 5-5 timer to generate a square wave signal with a frequency of 8 kHz and fit it to a high pass filter. What makes this signal an AC signal is that its average voltage is zero. This means the positive part of this signal is equal to the negative part of it, which was not the case in the input signal. So what values of R and C should we choose for this circuit design? Well, to have a better understanding, let's draw the frequency response of this circuit. So assume that we are feeding this circuit with a signal that has a very high frequency. And according to this formula, this term will be so small that it can be ignored. And these two parameters can be cancelled out. So what's remaining is that the output voltage amplitude is equal to the input voltage amplitude. Alright. So now we can draw the frequency response of the high pass filter. And remember that the cutoff frequency can be determined using this formula. The cutoff frequency is where the filter gain is equal to minus 3 dB. And minus 3 dB is where the signal output power is equal to half the input signal power. So make sure that your signal frequency is higher than the cutoff frequency. For my design, I've chosen 1 kilo ohm and 10 microfarad for R and C, which gives me a cutoff frequency of 16 Hz, which is way lower than my signal frequency. Alright, so now it's time to move on to low pass filters, which will be a piece of cake for us, because we have covered all that we need. Alright, so like we have done previously, we need to find the relationship between the input voltage and the output voltage using the voltage division formula. After that, we determine the filter behavior at low frequencies and high frequencies to be able to draw the frequency response of it. Let's start by applying DC voltage at the input, which has zero frequency. And by applying the output voltage amplitude formula, these two parameters will go to infinity and large numbers will cancel out. So we can see that the output voltage amplitude is equal to the input voltage amplitude. On the other hand, by applying a signal with a very high frequency at the input, we can see that this term goes to zero, which will lead the output voltage to go to zero as well. Okay, so now it's possible to draw the frequency response of this filter. And here it is. The cutoff frequency can be determined the same way as previous. Low pass filters can be used in power supplies with rectifiers, and they are also used in noise removal and harmonics filtering. Low pass filters are also used in the bouncing circuit. For more details, you can watch switch bouncing effect and the bouncing circuit episode. For the sake of demonstration, I've combined a high pass filter with cascaded low pass filters to form a band pass filter. But hold on, what would a low pass filter do to a square wave signal? And why would I build a cascaded low pass filter network? Well, let me tell you by answering the first question first. A square wave signal is actually composed of many sine waves, and they are called harmonics. Each harmonic has its own amplitude and frequency, 
and the harmonic amplitude decreases as the harmonic order increases. So higher order harmonics has less effect in forming the square wave signal. There is also one more thing to notice and that is the harmonic frequency increases as the harmonic order increases. So a low pass filter will allow me to cancel all the harmonics except the first order harmonic which has the same frequency as the input square wave signal. That's why a sine wave signal appears at the output when feeding a square wave signal to the filter. One final note related to harmonics I want to mention is that using input signal with a higher frequency makes it easier to filter because in high frequency square wave signals the frequency range between harmonics orders becomes larger. Alright, so what's the reason behind using cascaded low pass filter then? The advantage of using cascaded filter is that it makes it more accurate when selecting a specific frequency. That's why it was possible to select the first order harmonic only and reject the other harmonics, so we could obtain a sine wave shape. When it comes to cascaded filters, calculating the cutoff frequency is different, and it's done by using this formula. So according to my low pass filter design, first I found the cutoff frequency of one low pass filter, after that I've used this value to find the cutoff frequency of the third order low pass filter. The whole function of this bandpass filter is that it removes the DC offset from the input square wave signal and converts it to a sine wave. As a quick note, this is not the perfect way of cascading filters, and I've done it this way only for demonstration purpose. This brings me to the end of this video. If you have learned something new from it, please like, share and subscribe. And remember that your support is the only thing that keeps more videos coming. We have got Facebook group and Instagram page and their links are shared in the description section below. Stay tuned and see you next time!